had the good luck of uh, meeting him two or three times. Uh, I, I didn't cover the White House, so I didn't see him as often as the White House correspondents, such as Ray Shearer. But uh, I had occasion to be in his presence a couple of times. We did a program that three major networks, that is major at the time, ABC, CBS, and NBC, a program with President Kennedy that all three networks did jointly and we all ran. And I went to the White House for that. Each network had its own producer present. Fred Friendly was really the senior producer who did the program. I met Kennedy there. I met him at uh, a couple of Washington dinners. I was at the time the president of the Radio Television Correspondents Association and had the f fortune to sit next to him. And uh, I thought he was going to be, did not in the time he had become a great president, but was on his way to becoming a great president. He had an open mind. He, he was the kind of president a journalist can appreciate because he did his homework. Some presidents do not do their homework, but as a journalist, you know that a situation changes when you read about it. Uh, you spend an hour reading about something, you learn a little something, and the situation is a little different than it was when you first come to the reading and to the research. So you hope to have a president that does his homework because then he knows what he's doing instead of blundering into some situation he doesn't know much about. Kennedy did his homework, and uh, he was, he learned. He, uh, we went to, the White House, a group of correspondents I arranged with Pierre Salinger for a group of our correspondents who were in Washington during the Christmas period. They came back home from foreign posts for a brief period, maybe a week total at Christmas time, and they were in Washington. I called Pierre and, and said, can our correspondents, uh, eight or 10 of them, uh, who are traveling in this country, foreign posts come in and, and see the president while they're here. Could he give them some time to brief them or whatever? And Pierre set it up and we came in to talk to President Kennedy and he went around the room and uh, shook hands with each man, asked what place he was covering. And he was particularly interested in who, uh, who was covering in Berlin and who was covering in Vietnam. And uh, then we all sat down and he briefed us for about 10 minutes and he had indicated he would give us about an hour. Uh, after 10 minutes, he began interviewing two of our guys. Other presidents I have encountered or uh, read about would not have done that. Uh, Lyndon Johnson would have spent the whole hour haranguing the whole group about his foreign policy. Are you from Vietnam? Let me tell you about the foreign policy in Vietnam and you ought to support our foreign policy in Vietnam. Uh, you from Berlin, let me tell you what's happening in Berlin. Kennedy started questioning our guy in Berlin and our guy in Vietnam and arguing, discussing with them a little bit his policy. And it was clear that he didn't buy everything he was told by his own advisors. He wanted some independent advisors who knew what was happening in these places to bounce some ideas off of and some skepticism that he had. And uh, it was a striking bit of learning on his part. He used the thing to fill his own head and see if there was some angle that he hadn't thought about or his people in the State Department uh, or at the CIA hadn't told him about. So it was a fascinating look at, at Kennedy's mind, which was open and inquiring and skeptical, which are uh, traits that a journalist has got to feel uh, are useful to a president. Was he media savvy? Media savvy? I think he was very media savvy. Uh, he was kind of amused by the media because they had their thing to do and he had his thing to do. And uh, he was so media savvy that he had these news conferences which still looked on as maybe the best live news conferences of any president. He had the, uh, uh, he was the very first to engage in news conferences of live of, 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 as frequently as he did. And he was an ace at it. He, uh, I'm trying to remember something he did. Uh, one time I was uh, at the White House as a producer of a speech 
that Kennedy gave that was on all three networks. And he told us to give him, at the end of the speech, to give him a one minute cue, half a minute, and then down to 30, 20, 10 seconds. And he would, he was gonna improvise the last minute. He felt that reading something, although he was good at it, but reading something is not as effective. You don't feel the person is talking to you as much as if he drops what he's reading and talks to you directly. And he wanted to finish up one minute improvised. Uh, uh, most presidents don't, uh, don't have the nerve to do that. And so we gave him the signals that one minute he started improvising and at, uh, as the program was supposed to end and we gave him a zero signal, that was it. God bless America, whatever his ending was. So he was supremely confident about his uh, articulateness and his ability to handle television. Talk about uh, television's coverage of the Bay of Pigs invasion. This is an example of uh, something I think is important in relation to Kennedy, but I, I'm not sure that our coverage uh, necessarily is relevant to my my thoughts about it. I, I think he felt the CIA let him down in the Bay of Pigs, that they gave him a false analysis of what would happen when we went into Cuba or when the, not we exactly, but the Cuban uh, militants went into Cuba with, with our support, our uh, uh, logistical support. And, and subsequently he uh, acted as if uh, he needed uh, a check on the CIA, and uh, he uh, what was uh, he did that was interesting. He, he, he I think, uh, because of what he did in the Bay of Pigs, where he showed that he was able to refuse support, they asked him to provide air support, which he had not agreed to do, and he refused to provide air support which sealed the doom of those people we were supporting, which, which indicated to me that he might not have kept us in Vietnam. I think he might well have pulled us out of Vietnam. If he had the nerve to cut those guys off in Cuba, he might have had the nerve to take his losses in Vietnam and stay out of there. And some of the, uh, Kennedy's closest advisors think he would not have kept us in Vietnam. How about the Cuban Missile Wreck Crisis and that coverage? Well, the Cuban Missile Crisis uh, had to do with a, a, a cover. We didn't <laughs> quite know what was going on, but we were covering whatever came from the White House, and it was clear uh, things were going on that were, uh, and a few days later came to light, but uh, a lot of it was happening behind the scenes, and gradually it came into, into view, and uh, the The coverage of it was was important to help Kennedy work his way through the the crisis. And it was it was a um, ABC correspondent, John, well, short guy, ball headed short guy, uh, had a part in the resolution of the Cuban Missile Crisis, as you may recall. He talked to a representative of the Russians and came in and offered. And, and told uh, the administration of what this Russian was saying they would do if uh, we uh, should uh, agree not to invade Cuba. But I, I, I didn't, uh, I, I don't have any very close recollection of the coverage was the standard coverage. We took uh, what we could find out from the White House and, and, and Kennedy used the media to get across the points he needed to make as the thing developed.